Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for hearing me today. My name is Laura Hastings, and I live in Barrington. I am a gun owner. I like to shoot them. I like the range myself. Um, I'm also the victim of domestic violence. And I know that listening to victims' stories can at times be overwhelming and invoke thoughts of horror or sadness or pity, and that's not my goal today. I don't want you to feel sorry. I want you, I'm here to encourage you to act as if there are lives that depend on it. Police response to domestic violence is imperfect by design, as the desired outcome is a true conundrum. Oftentimes the abuser is the breadwinner, the one with the legal immigration status, the one with the access to a vehicle, the co-parent, the life partner. So imagine as a police officer, you are called to a house and there is no correct answer and there is no real saving. If you arrest the partner against the victim's wishes, the complex family system as it exists can disintegrate. But imagine as the victim, you engage the police or the court system because it is your best awful option. You may fear losing your home, your access to income, your children your every single part of your life. But your situation is so bad, you decide to risk losing all of those things because asking for help is your best awful option. Now imagine your abuser has access to a gun and is unhappy with you because you have involved the authorities. By far, the riskiest time in a domestic violence situation is the time period after a protective order is issued. When control is the driver in the domestic situation, as is evidenced by the mere presence of abuse, the loss of control can have a direct and intense effect on the abuser. Why as a governing body would you not put in controls that ameliorate a bit of the fear and diminish some of the opportunity for further violence? S-2767 makes sense on its face. Domestic abusers with either a current protective order or any sort of domestic abuse conviction should not have access to a gun. The District of Columbia and 20 states, including Texas, prohibit those convicted of a domestic violence misdemeanor from having a gun. If you break the law, we as a society put parameters on your life. This isn't new. This is a logical step to avoid further criminal activity which is something that this governing body is tasked with every single day. If I speed in my car with regularity, I can lose my license, even if I never hurt another soul, because you have decided that my right to behave dangerously is not as important as the rights of those around me to live. S-2767 does not affect any single part of your day if you obey existing law. But if you are so hurtful that a victim feels the need to call to action the best awful option, you lose some privileges. Bottom line, you should. The scare tactics are old, powerful from, for some reason, but dated. We are smarter now than we have been in the past. We understand that gun violence has altered our society in a way we did not understand before. And we also understand we have the power to change that. I implore you to act as if you recognize one of the people <clears throat> supported by this bill that you see that it's your neighbor, or your child teacher, or your coworker, or your family, or me. Because it is, victims of domestic violence don't just live beneath the shadows, we're right in front of you. And this committee has the opportunity to let everyone know that our right to simply breathe also matters. Please take advantage of it. Thank you today for the opportunity to speak in support of S2767. I appreciate your time.